What is heart rate variability? So heart rate variability or HRV is a major measure, cannot talk today, is a measure of the changes in time between successive heartbeats. Dun -dun. There's your pause. Dun -dun. There's your pause. Dun -dun. That measure in between successive heart rates. Dun -dun. Dun -dun. Dun -dun. Think about that measure between your successive heart rate. This variability is the heart rate in, as an important indicator of the state of your autonomic nervous system. So autonomic nervous system, A and S. We're gonna break down your two parts of your, of your nervous system and we're gonna talk about that this morning and how it really is impacted by this heart rate variability. So A and S is responsible for regulating many of our essential bodily functions, including our immune system. You guys have heard me preach it. I'm gonna tell you again this morning. The studies are showing that kids with Tourette's and tics and related disorders comes from an imbalanced immune system. Why is the immune system imbalanced in the first place? So your, your ANS, your autonomic nervous system can even help to balance your immune system. So it's really a cool tool for helping to calm that system and it can have super significant health benefits. So the ANS has two branches, the sympathetic nervous system. Some of you may have learned this in like high school biology, the sympathetic nervous system and the parasympathetic nervous system. So SNS, sympathetic nervous system and PNS, parasympathetic nervous system. I have a funny story about PNS that maybe I'll tell at the end of this. Um, at least I think it's funny. The rest of you may not. Um, Bailey and I think it's hilarious. So you have the SNS and the PNS. The SNS is responsible for fight or flight. So we were talking about the ANS and the PNS. So the ANS is that autonomic nervous system. There is a very delicate balance between these two branches. So the ANS and the PNS. And the heart rate variability is a measure between that variability, like I said, between those, your, your heartbeats. And it reflects this balance between the ANS and the PNS. So higher heart rate variability is associated with greater PNS activity. So that parasympathetic nervous system activity, which is associated with that relaxation, improved digestion, better sleep, reduced inflammation, and lower heart rate variability, on the other hand, is associated with greater sympathetic nervous system activity, which can lead to stress, anxiety, and increased inflammation. So we have, studies have found that individuals with chronic stress, anxiety, depression, and other mental health conditions have lower heart rate variability than those without these conditions. So your heart rate variability, how your heart is beating, really can make a significant difference in your body overall. Research has also found that heart rate variability can play an important role in modulating the immune system. So when we look at these studies and we start to look at how you can modulate the immune system, you have to understand there's many, many ways to modulate or turn down, okay? We're gonna use the word modulate to turn down that immune system response. You can use heart rate variability as a complementary tool but is it necessarily the only tool that's gonna to help support your child's nervous and immune system? No, we really have to start to look at what's going on under the hood, but it's a great calming tool and we're gonna dig into that. So the immune system, we know this, it's responsible for defending our body against harmful pathogens, but an overactive immune system that can, has this chronic inflammation can really lead to things like autoimmune diseases. We're seeing all sorts of symptoms. All of these chronic issues are on the rise, not just for adults, but just for children as well. And studies have found that increased parasympathetic nervous system activity, as indicated by that higher heart rate variability, can help calm that immune system and reduce inflammation. So when we start to look at how important this is for our kids, I can tell you that I was never taught as a child how to calm down. I don't know about you, but I was never taught how to calm myself down. Um, you know, I was always, stop crying, don't cry, stop crying. But I can look back and say that I really felt like I was in a, in a hyper aware state of fight or flight 
a lot of times as a child um, because I was never taught these tools to calm down and to help bring these things down in my own body. And I can tell you because I didn't know those skills, I could not then turn around and teach those skills to my kid. Just stop crying, quit crying, stop doing that. Instead of how do we start to calm down these responses in the body? We're, we're seeing a rise of, if you hear itis, itis in Latin means flame. So when you're thinking about all of these itises that people have, conjunctivitis, you get colitis, you get arthritis, inflammation, flame. Okay, we're looking at this imbalanced immune system. Um, but, you know, lots of other inflammatory conditions such as allergies and asthma, as well as things like tics, Tourette's, OCD, ADHD, um, SPD, all of these things that are really kind of driven by this underlying inflammation. Heart rate variability, biofeedback, or as we like to call it, heart math. This is my heart math tool, um, is a technique that involves monitoring and training individuals and kids to regulate their heart rate variability. We can teach the skill. We can teach our kids how to have good heart rate variability. We can teach ourselves how to have good heart rate variability. There are tools that you can use to improve heart rate variability. We're going to talk about heart math as a biofeedback measure in, in just a few minutes, but this is, this is my little tool. You can hook it up to your phone on my phone. I'm streaming on my phone, so you can't, we can't do that, but you can hook it up to your phone and you can, your kids can play video games. They can do um, different sessions that are on the app to help them balance heart rate variability. So it's a really good complementary tool. So we know that studies, when we look at, at heart math and the heart math Institute have found that this HRV biofeedback can improve your symptoms of anxiety, depression, PTSD, chronic pain. It can improve our immune function and reduce inflammation, which benefits our kids. It also benefits us because I'm telling you, if your kids are running around with a lot of inflammation and they are living in your home, 9.9 .9 times out of 10, you are also running around with a lot of inflammation because they live in your home. You guys are eating the same things. You are doing the same activities. You are exposed to the same environment. You as a parent probably, and I can see this because I have a lot of, of anxious moms, is that you've got yourself a lot of inflammation and you also don't know how to calm yourself down. So we have to look at how can we teach our kids these skills? And I, and I love the discussion of heart rate variability. We can start to calm the inflammation by the way that we breathe. The way that we breathe can help us to start to calm inflammation. So heart rate variability can be a really important indicator of the state of your autonomic nervous system and really can play an important role in regulating the immune system. We know that higher heart rate variability, which reflects greater parasympathetic nervous system activity, it can help calm the immune system, reduce that inflammation, while that lower heart rate variability reflects greater SNS activity. We're seeing that increased fight or flight, that stress, that anxiety, <clears throat> those higher amounts of inflammation. We're going to talk about heart rate variability techniques. So, but when we look at the techniques and the biofeedback that can be used to improve our heart rate variability, we're seeing better health outcomes. We're seeing this complementary approach to helping our kids be in this state of rest and digest, of calm. You're going to hear me talk about calming all the time because that is what we want to do. We want to calm that underlying inflammation from tons of different directions, not just one, not just through, through supplementation, not just through diet, diet, rest, exercise, stress reduction, supplementation. How can we approach all of these things from all of these different angles? That is holistic. We want to improve a healthier balance for our kids and for ourselves. It's a really easy tool that when you are learning it, you can teach your kids. So some clinical data, this is clinical data. There's no like hardcore published studies. This is just clinicians like myself talking about what they're experiencing with this sort of biofeedback, with this heart rate variability. Um, and we're seeing that individuals with tic disorders, with Tourette's have lower heart rate variability compared to healthy controls. So when we look at those people that are healthy, that are having this really good heart rate variability, our kids with the tics, with the Tourette's, with the ASD, ADHD, 
They have, a, they have a lower heart rate variability. Why? Because they are always stuck in the state of fight or flight. So let's talk about how we can have some steps to improve our heart rate variability. Not just for our kids, but for ourselves. We want to improve this overall functioning to help reduce symptoms from so many different areas. So we're gonna talk a little bit more about heart math. Okay. So one possible explanation for improving heart rate variability is to rebalance that autonomic nervous system, um, reduce that overactivity that really is contributing to a lot of our symptoms. And improving heart rate variability can have those positive effects on our mood, anxiety, and stress. Just think about how your kids are gonna sit in class all day and they have these constant, I don't wanna say the word insult because that's not really what it is, but they're in this environment all day that can really <clears throat> Be stressful for many of them. How important would it be for them to be able to sit in class and practice this heart rate variability to really calm down their system in the middle of a stressful situation? And I think so many of us need it. I mean, you get behind some horrible, horrible drive around the highway, maybe you need to calm yourself down too. What's your heart rate variability like? Are you in fight or flight? Or are you in rest and digest? We really wanna to start to calm those symptoms for our kids. So if you want to improve, Heart rate variability, here's a few things you can do. We're gonna give you some tips. So relaxation tips like deep breathing, meditation, and muscle relaxation can really be helpful. So we're gonna talk a little bit more about the deep breathing in a second, but meditation, people hear meditation and they think, oh, that's woo-woo, that's woo-woo. We know from the studies that of meditation that changing your brain waves changes you not only mentally but physically and it changes changes this out here why because you have this better heart rate variability so your energy field that people are feeling three feet away from you this is not woo woo this is science it is there are studies people when we have this people can feel your energy three feet away from you based on your heart rate variability people with better heart rate variability have a better a better field um <clears throat> so we know that meditation is one of those things that can be really beneficial for helping to improve your heart rate variability. It is not woo-woo. You can get on YouTube. I like the Honest Guys on YouTube, it is free. And you can do 10, 20 minute meditations. It's really actually a good skill to teach your child now um, because it does, it changes you mentally and physically. Because these techniques help to reduce stress and increase that parasympathetic nervous system activity, we have better heart rate variability. Something else that's really, really important. Remember I just said we are not going to just focus on diet. Okay? Diet's one piece of the puzzle. We're not just gonna focus on supplements. Supplements are another piece of the puzzle. One of my pieces of the puzzle is exercise, is movement. Why? Because it helps improve your heart rate variability. It does a whole bunch of other stuff too. Um, and we're not focusing on movement just to like, oh, gotta, gotta lose some pounds. Our kids need to move. They need to be getting exercise. It improves their digestion. It improves neurotransmitter in the neurotransmitters in the gut. Helps with motility if you have a kid who's constipated. Exercise does so many things, but it also helps with heart rate variability. And so we have to look at different forms of exercise. Aerobic, running around on the soccer field, but also resistance training, lifting heavy stuff um, is really beneficial over time. So let's talk about heart math. I love heart math. Heart math is a biofeedback technique Here's the little, my little tool, heart math. You can get it. I think it's like 150 bucks. I'm not really sure at this point what the cost is, but you clip it to your ear without an earring. Yes, I have earrings on today, but you clip it to your ear and then it connects to your computer or your phone. They have a Bluetooth option. And like I said, you kids can play video games. You can do different sessions on your phone or on your computer to help teach your kids heart rate variability. And it has to do with the way that you're breathing. So. One of them is like popping balloons and your kid has to breathe in deep breath. And as they're taking this deep breath, you know, their little character gets higher in the sky and then they can pop that balloon and then they have to come back down. How long can they get that breath to come back down? So it's actually a, a biofeedback technique that we can use to teach our kids to increase that heart rate variability. 
So heart math is a stress management symptoms that, that combines technology research. There's so much research behind heart math. It's one of the reasons I actually got certified in heart math was because I wanted to know more about heart rate variability. I wanted to know more about this field that people can feel around me. Because is it a good field or is it a bad field? Um, so there are, it's really practical, easy techniques to help improve your heart rate variability. Helps with emotional and physical well-being. So it's really based on the idea that your heart is not just a pump. You know, we go through life, we go to our biology class, our heart's just a pump. Right? But it's a sophisticated information processing center that communicates with our brain. Your heart, heart, brain, variability, they actually sync. And when you get into meditation, and we could go totally down a rabbit hole with this, but it's actually <clears throat> one of the things that Dr. Joe Dispenza teaches is about, you know, your heart rate and your, your brain variability and your field. Um, super, super, super interesting. So it's also, your heart is also a sophisticated information processing center, just like your computer, just like your phone. Um, and the rest of your body. So heart math techniques and technology focus on harnessing the power of heart brain connection to help individuals manage stress, increase resilience, improve health, starting to reduce inflammation. So we put on our little gadget and we can practice our breathing on our phone, on our computer. It's a, it is a biofeedback mechanism. So I get a lot of people asking about biofeedback. This is actually one of the complimentary biofeedback tools that I really enjoy that I use in my life, in my home, in my practice with clients is heart math variability monitoring. And you can record your sessions so that you can look back and say, ooh, my heart rate variability got really, really good because I've been practicing. We know, we talked about heart rate variability. It's that those intervals between successive beats. And it really reflects the nervous system. Your nervous system, your, your nervous system, your neurological system, your immune system, they are connected. This is where I do comprehensive neuroimmune analysis. We're looking at how these things connect. We can learn and teach our kids how to regulate their heart rate variability to help reduce all of these symptoms. These are, this is one of those things, your kid is six, you teach them now and you practice it several times a week. When they're an adult, they're gonna be good to go. They're gonna know how to chill. They're gonna know how to be calm. I did not know how to do that. It took me a long time to learn that. It took me a really long time meditating and, and working through all of these processes with my son to figure out how I could calm my own nervous system responses. So I love heart math for that. Like I said, you can do it on the computer. You can do it with your little, your little Bluetooth. Um, they have lots of little ways that you can really practice heart math. But it's really gonna start to shift your phys physiological state. And you're gonna get into this state of heart brain coherence where they are really functioning well together because these are important. You gotta go to school, you gotta sit down and concentrate, you gotta go to a, a soccer game, you gotta do all of these things. You want a good balance here, right? You want these things to be functioning properly where your kid is sitting there calm. Um, you may have seen <clears throat> the video that Jeanette posted of her son driving and six months ago he was taking and now he can you know, really kind of drive and he's calm and he's singing a song. Why? Because part of that process that we have done is really working on calming that inflammation and bringing down that nervous system response. It was not just one thing. It wasn't diet. It wasn't just supplements. It was many things. It was many, many techniques. Um, and he has, her son's done lots of really cool stuff. Um, but we want to get our systems in sync. We want to get our systems in balance. And heart math is a really great holistic approach for stress management that combines science, technology, and practical, practical techniques and, and to help you. People hear me say holistic and they think that I'm, I'm, it's woo woo. And here's what I'm gonna tell you. I am incredibly science-based. You show, show me the data, show me the data, show me the studies, show me the information. Let me look into it. Let me dig into it. Let me say mm, what's missing in this study. I am about the science. There has to be some research behind it. There has to be some knowledge behind the things that I'm teaching and talking about with, with my clients. So another way that we can improve. So we talked about exercise right? We talked about relaxation techniques. We talked about heart math. What about sleep? Sleep is so important. Sleep is where your body begins to heal. If you're letting your kids stay up all night on their iPads, 
watching their screens, they are not getting good sleep. They are not getting into the healing process. Your body between the time about 10 o'clock at night and midnight, for those two hours of sleep, if you're in a deep sleep, it's about, it equals about four hours of sleep. So you're sleeping for two hours. You've got to get your kids in bed. They've got to be sleeping. If you're, if you're calling me and messaging me and telling me that your kid is having issues and they're staying up till three o'clock in the morning, the first thing you're going to do is work on sleep. Sleep is important. It is important for helping us to regulate our heart rate variability. It gives us our time to heal. It gives us that rest and digest mode. You have to be sleep. You have to be sleeping. Your kids have to be sleeping. If you're a night owl, cut it out, get your butt in bed. You want, your kids need to get, depending on age, 10 to 12 hours of sleep a night, especially growing teenagers. People think, oh, teenagers, they sleep too much. No, they are doubling in height and weight and size. They are growing. They need that time so that their body can grow and repair. As adults, typically seven to eight hours of sleep, but you need to be sleeping like 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. 10 p.m. to 6 a.m. are gonna be really key hours for you to sleep. Get your butt in bed by 10. And then if you got to get up at six and six the next morning, I don't, I'm in bed by nine 30. I don't normally set an alarm. Five 30 rolls around. I am awake. The sun just starts to peak. I am going to start to get up. Um, and that's just how I've trained my body that I'm going to get this really good sleep. Nine 30. I'm out. And you have to understand that if you kind of push through that, it's going to be three hours before your body gets into that sleep mode again. So you catch that second win, right? No, you have to go to bed. Your body says, eh, eh, bedtime, go to bed. Stop messing around. Get in bed. Okay. Then we also want to talk about diet. Diet is another really important way that we can improve our heart rate variability. You have to be, be eating healthy, nutritious food. So when we talk about inflammation, we talk about an imbalanced immune system. If you're eating poop food, trash food that I like to call it, that is very inflammatory, packaged, processed, bagged, bottled food that's inflammatory, your immune system is gonna be turned on. You're gonna have issues with heart rate variability, with ticks, with all sorts of symptoms because your body's in high alert, you're in the state of fight or flight, right? Diet is a piece of it. We've talked about sleep, we've talked about exercise, we've talked about heart math, talked about <clears throat> all of relaxation techniques, so stress reduction. So we really have to look at how all of these things really impact our body. Eating protein, getting rid of those processed sugary foods. What I want parents to understand is that heart rate variability, things like heart math, are just another technique that we can use to start, the, start to calm the system. It is not a, a, a fix-all. Why? Because I can tell you that the clients I'm working with have far more than one trigger. They have multiple triggers. There is not one root cause, there are multiple root causes. We have to approach that from every area. Diet, rest, exercise, stress reduction, supplementation, we have to target that, that piece. So heart rate variability is just another complementary approach to what I'm doing with my clients. Things like acupuncture, massage, chiropractic, heart rate variability is another technique that I love for one, calming, calming that nervous system response, but really teaching our kids these skills that they need to be productive human beings and adults later on in life. So I hope that was helpful. I hope you guys had a, have a greater understanding of heart rate variability.